I'm going to microwave in this little mug some of this applesauce, which is too chunky to be applesauce. I'm gonna say stewed apples. See, how does the back, how does the back burn? I don't understand the bagel setting on the toaster. Oh my gosh, what the heck? Both the backs burned and then the, okay. I really didn't have to microwave this, but done now so we're cream cheese in the bagels I don't think I've ever had a bagel with cream cheese like any kind of bagel with any kind of cream cheese and then I'm gonna put this applesauce on there is that really weird let's do it on one of them let's take one bite just so I can say I tried it Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. It's not bad. I just don't want it. <laughs> Actually, I don't know. It's kind of good, but I do want to sweeten it a little bit. I'm just going to try to drizzle just a teensy tiny bit. Stop. Halt. See, I would mix this together separately, but that is too much work. I already got two dishes dirty with this, and that was more than intended, so. How many people did I offend with this? Is this something that offends people? I don't really know. Pumpkin pie spice. Here we go. Here we go. Look at that, so cute. Hello, so cute. Show my bagels. So, look at that. And then we just have more applesauce to eat. Yeah, it is weird to me, I don't know. But I do like it. Fun, I love trying new things. For the first lunch of the video, I will be eating leftovers, which was a poor plan. I should have filmed me actually making this meal. It might have made it seem like less of an ugly, just plate of garbage. Basically, it was a green curry simmer sauce that I bought from Trader Joe's and I made it with some fried tofu and carrot, eggplant, and broccoli. And I'm mad because the veggies even turned out to be kind of like Halloween colors, you know, if you use your imagination a little bit. Eggplant is purple, broccoli is green, and carrots are orange. I mean, come on. And I didn't even film it. Embarrassing. It's even gonna show up a second time in this video. What was, what was, what was wrong with me? And then for a little snack, I had exactly one date with peanut butter. A nice little sweet treat, you know, when you got a weird taste in your mouth and you just want something sweet. And they may look like roaches, but I won't apologize because that fits the nature of this video anyway. This next meal might be slightly controversial. I'm not really sure what the reception of this one will be, but this is my somewhat celebr celebratory meal that I made for myself after I finished a video. A video that then went on to perform terribly, but I was proud of it, okay? And I think there's a lesson in there, so, you know, you, ce you celebrate yourself. So yeah, I had some toaster waffles, put some earth balance on those, and some maple syrup, and then I also air fried some chicken nuggets, and some sweet potato fries. The last time I actually made like chicken and waffles properly, you know, like actually made waffles from scratch and had some like fried tofu as the chicken and stuff. I remember there being some sort of like spicy maple mayo dip, spicy maple aioli, I don't really know, but it was really good. So I decided to make something like that again, just like off the top of my head though, I just freestyled it basically was mayonnaise, hot sauce, maple syrup, and some seasonings like paprika, some pepper, garlic. Honestly, it was really good. 
It looks a little trashy because I drizzled it all over. I should have had it in a nice little cute dipping cup on the side, but I didn't have any clean. And here are some clips of some various snacks that I had this night. Um, I was considering replacing them or deleting them or something of that sort, and then I realized that cursed is actually what we're going for in this one, so... Here we have some peanut butter apple toast that I've been making a lot lately, especially when I don't know what to eat. I don't know, I don't want to put in a lot of time or effort into thinking about what to eat um, and just make a little nice little toast breakfast. The apples, you know, they're not as easy to place nicely on bread as are banana slices. It's always a little clunky, you know, I don't really know, I just kind of put them on there. This is for a video, so I actually, like, tried to kind of care, but usually I just, you know, it doesn't, I don't, it just, just put them on there. And then all the extra apple slices I just put on the side, and I dip them in some extra peanut butter. This day, I went a little bit harder than usual on the peanut butter, I gotta say, um, but I do tend to eat a lot of peanut butter when I eat peanut butter. I love peanut butter. And I also put a shit ton of cinnamon on top. Sometimes I put some hemp seeds or chia seeds on there. Very messy, just put it all on there. Protein, I don't know. And then sometimes I also drizzle a little bit of maple syrup on there for some sweetener. Um, and yeah, easy simple breakfast. Looks like garbage, but I love it. I'm holding it so awkwardly, can you tell? It's really hot. This was a meal where I was like, is this gonna give the fall vibes? You know, is this is this gonna feel like fall time, autumn leaves and stuff? Um, and then looking back on it, this is like probably the best thing that I made in the whole video. Basically just a bowl of roasted veggies and potatoes topped with a nice luscious lentil gravy. Um, yeah, this is all my favorite things, basically. I learned from the channel Internet Shaquille, his video on roasting Brussels sprouts, that it's a nice thing, a helpful thing, to actually preheat your cookie sheet. So I've been doing this lately whenever I put like any kind of potatoes, veggies, whatever in the oven, and I want to like really get them roasty and toasty in there. I put in the pan, the cookie sheet, while it's preheating, and so once it's time for you to actually spread out your veggies onto it, they like immediately begin to sizzle the F up, you know what I mean? So it kind of gives you a, like a head start. And I did the potatoes separately because I was planning on cooking them longer. Um, I basically just mix them together with a bunch of olive oil and seasonings and salt. And then I did the carrots next and saved off other veggies like cauliflower, asparagus, purple onion for like five, 10 minutes later than the carrots because the carrots usually take slightly longer. And then for the lentils, I basically just cooked them similarly to how I usually cook them, which is just on the stove with a broth, which to me is just water and bouillon cubes. And then I'll put a little olive oil in that. But then once the lentils were like fully cooked in there, I started adding some flour slurries. Is that what it's called? Where you like, put some flour and some water in a jar or a bottle or something and then shake it up until it's like completely dissolved. And then you pour that into the lentil mixture and it starts to, you know, thicken it up like gravy. And I would just add other ingredients like olive oil or other seasonings or whatever to make it more gravy-esque. And this is so good and like a really nice way if you want to have just like a comfort food and you're craving something like mashed potatoes or whatever but you don't feel like making a sort of like protein for the meal, you know? Your gravy can be the protein. Just make a lentil gravy and there you go. Amazing, fantastic. So yeah, I don't know. You should definitely make this if you want some nice Thanksgiving reminiscent comfort food meal, do it. <laughs> Oh, Emily, we've seen this smoothie before. You make it in every single video. You only know how to make one smoothie. Um, 
and it's this one, and you are correct, but hear me out because I, I big brained today, this day, whatever day this was, Thursday, Thursday was the day that I big brained on us all, okay? I literally made the same smoothie that I always make, but what did I do? I separated it into half, I separated it in half, one half purple, one half green. Um, I did add a little bit of spirulina that I did have um, handy to make it slightly more vibrant of a green. That's all I did. I just separated the it based on color. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. <gasps> wow. Wow. It's beautiful. I need to take a picture, huh? The only thing was the purple part, um, the blueberry part was a lot thicker than the green part. So, uh, well, actually, does that really matter? I don't know, but... That's fun. That's so fun. And I gave some to my dog because he loves um, smoothies and he likes to lick things. So... Wow, so delicious. I kept putting off filming this video because I kept not feeling like fall yet. Only just like this week have I begun actually wearing like pants and long sleeves, kind of. I was still wearing like shorts and short sleeves every day and not really feeling up for like soup and stuff like that. Like really, you know, like comfort, warm foods and stuff you know like it's just i don't did not feel that yet i'm just now like starting to begin to feel it but anyways this is what i make like when i'm not really feeling up for having like a bowl of soup but i want to have the whole like grilled cheese tomato soup moment you know what i'm talking about so i just basically make a tomato sauce and shove a bunch of spinach in it and then just dip my ch grilled cheese in the sauce. It's basically the same effect, but just like, you know, I'm not really in the mood for like sipping on a whole bowl of soup during the warmer times of the year. So I don't know, this is my way of adapting, I guess. I just basically take a can of whatever kind of tomato-y thing I have, whether it's crushed tomatoes or tomato sauce, and I just add some olive oil, put some nutritional yeast in there. I might put some vegan cheese if we have some. I'll put, you know, some seasonings, garlic and oregano and basil or whatever, salt. And then I just make my little grilled cheese. I don't even clean the pan because why? It's not necessary. You know, you get a little bit of tomatoiness on your bread, but it kind of just makes it look more rustic. You know, it makes it look, mm, I don't know, quirky. No. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> So since I made a sweet cream cheese bagel breakfast meal in the beginning of the video, I thought I should also try some sort of savory cream cheese bagel breakfast meal also. And you know, I have to be honest, I don't think I'm a cream cheese kind of person. You know, I I don't know. I, I like cheesecake. I'm not opposed to cream cheese as like a condiment, I guess. Well, but that's what this is here. I don't know. I don't know. Like, when I was eating this, I was like, this should have just been avocado. You know, I would have just preferred for the same exact meal, but just replace the cream cheese with avocado. I think I just only like cream cheese in things when it's, like, kind of masked by, like, several other things, like in, like in cheesecake. You know, there's tons of other stuff in there, and it's sweetened the F up. And then in, in, in like, a California roll, there's obviously a bunch of other shit in there, so... If you guys want to recommend me more cream cheese stuff, let me know. I still have some of this cream cheese left over and I would like to try more things. But as of now, I don't think cream cheese bagels is my thing. And that's okay, you know? More cream cheese for the rest of you guys. Maybe I'm just a West Coast girl, you know? So, I also put some pumpkin seeds on this to make it 
you know, my attempt of making it seem more fall-ish. I also bought this pumpkin spice cold brew concentrate from Sprouts that I was really excited about. Um, and this is me making way too big of a cup of it. Way too big. I've been having this with stevia most of the time. Whatever milk I have, it's nice to get like a concentrate because it's really, really strong, so you don't have to have creamer. You just add milk to it, to your liking, and it still tastes like really creamy. Hopefully that makes sense. I've been making it with stevia most of the time, but every once in a while I'll put in some maple syrup for fun. Little fun alternative to my usual matcha routine. Is this, is this a lot? No, it was a serving. It's probably just, just because I have a lot of ice, I think, that it seems like a lot. This day for lunch, I decided to combine the tomato sauce leftovers from the grilled cheese and the lentil gravy leftovers from the whatever that dinner was called and make a little pasta sauce out of it. I cooked up some of my favorite, my new favorite jumbo macaroni noodles and I just scooped the noodles straight from the pasta water into the sauce to have it hopefully all come together and become really thick and creamy and delicious. And then I added also my last slice of Follow Your Heart American Cheese. I also added a little bit of Earth Balance, and this was genius. I was inspired somewhat by Hamburger Helper, you could say, to make this. And I love these noodles. This sauce was genius somehow, a lentil gravy tomato-esque sauce. If you got cheese, put it in there, nutritional yeast, I don't know. It's so good. I've made it a couple times since then, and I'm gonna make it again. Why does it look so good? <laughs> Me choosing to use the wrong lens on this day and also combine this with a periwinkle plate was not the most appetizing choice I've made, but it was delicious. And then unfortunately we move from a hit to definitely a miss. Um, this is definitely a fail for me. F's in the chat. I don't like this Trader Joe's queso, cashew queso sauce. I don't like it. No. I try, I've try. i tried it a few times now in different ways. It's not for me. I don't get it. It's not good. I don't understand. If you have tips for making it good, let me know. But... This, okay, this, I will say, this was my fault. Bad idea here. I thought that it would, like, melt down in the air fryer when I fried it with the chips, you know? I don't know. I don't know why I did that. It was not a good idea. I, I tried to put some beans and tomato and onion on it, uh, because we didn't have a salsa that I liked at the moment. I also tried to make, like, a chipotle mayo thing, because we don't have, like, a sour cream or avocado or anything. This was, like, desperate attempt to just make a meal when I really didn't feel like making anything, you know what I mean? Anyways, if you saw me eat this... No, you didn't. Okay. No, mm -mm. no, mm -mm. no, stop. No, you didn't. So, for breakfast on Saturday, I decided to make some of these cinnamon rolls that I just bought from Trader Joe's. If you didn't know, they have some accidentally vegan cinnamon rolls. Also, some pumpkin rolls during this time of year. I still like the cinnamon rolls better, the plain cinnamon rolls better. The pumpkin rolls seem a little bit aggressive to me in a little, slightly artificial tasting. I have been wanting to make a whole like cinnamon roll batch from scratch and like before you roll it up, put a bunch of like fruit in there, like apple slices and strawberry slices, whatever, and just have like, I don't know, a bunch of bunch of stuff in between the rolls of the cinnamon roll. I thought that would be really good. But I decided to try it out a little bit with these Trader Joe's rolls and that wasn't really a good idea because once you unfold them um, and try to fold them back up, you kind of just lose a lot of the cinnamon filling and it kind of just makes a mess. Not the best idea, definitely a better thing to do when you're making them from scratch. But I did one with apple and I also did one with pumpkin puree. The pumpkin one, you really can't taste the pumpkin at all. It just kind of made it slightly like gooier on the inside, which I appreciate. But the apple one, you could actually taste the apple and it was like a really nice little cinnamon apple roll. And for lunch, I this is the most chicken nuggets I've ate in a week for sure. Um, I don't know what it is, but wanted to finish off that bag of sweet potato fries and 
just felt like this would be a good meal. And you know what? It was a good meal. All in the air fryer, baby. And that's that maple spicy, what is it? Spicy maple dip and also some barbecue sauce. For dessert, I made um one of my own unique creations. I wanted to use up the applesauce, chunky applesauce stuff, and so I microwaved it for a little bit, get it all nice and warm, cozy, and then I put a little bit of vanilla ice cream in the middle of it, you know, so it would start kind of melting. Um, and then I crumbled up one of my peanut butter cookies. I had made a batch of these like before this week started, and so that's why I've been eating like a few of them throughout the week, but I basically crumbled that up on top as like a crust, you know? This is kind of like going for like an apple crisp kind of vibe right here. This was too much though, it was too sweet. Too much, too much sugar for, for, uh, for a snack for me. <laughs> On Sunday morning, I wanted to eat something somewhat healthy, but also easy. And I didn't feel like preparing a smoothie and a matcha or coffee beverage. So I decided to just combine it into one smoothie. And I think I just left out the blueberries because I wasn't sure if blueberry would like go with matcha as good. But now that I think about it, it totally would have been fine. I don't know why. Like I couldn't even barely taste the matcha in this smoothie. But basically it was my normal smoothie ingredients. Just, I just added matcha and I didn't add blueberries. I was just trying to do something slightly different, you know? Here I am trying the Trader Joe's cashew queso again, but this time microwaved on its own. But I don't understand this dip. I don't like it. I'm sorry. I, it's not good in my opinion. I even added a little bit of earth balance to it. I added seasoning and then I even melted some Violife vegan cheese on top of it. And I still, I just, it's not for me. I don't know. I like the Wayfair one if I'm gonna buy like a, a store made one. Finally, I really wanted to make some sort of soup this week. I feel like that's, you know, my favorite like fall, winter thing to make, like comfort food is soup. I love making soup, but it just really like hadn't felt like soup time, but I just felt like I had to make a soup. You know what I mean? But this is my first homemade soup of the season. So um, I'm a little rusty on my soup skills for sure. And I added way too much water to it. So then I felt like I just kept adding seasonings and kept adding bouillon cubes and it just still tasted kind of slightly bland, you know? So definitely I would say be like conservative on the water in the beginning. And then like, you can always add more water later if it gets too like thick and you want more broth or whatever. So this was kind of like a chicken noodle soup. Usually when I do a vegan chicken noodle soup, I will add in some pressed tofu. And I feel like it's a really perfect replacement for chicken in a chicken noodle soup. But I didn't realize that I actually did not have tofu at the time. So I just made the soup without a meat and then I just air fried some more chicken nuggets and put that on top and kind of like cut it into the soup. Not the best method because it kind of just gets soggy obviously when it's being mixed into the soup, but anyways. <laughs> I will link the video where I actually show in more detail the chicken noodle soup recipe that I love so much, but it's very, very simple. For breakfast on Monday, I decided to make a cute little pumpkin oatmeal breakfast. And so the instructions for the minute oats are to have half cup oats and then a cup of liquid. So what I did here was I did a half cup of water, a quarter cup of milk, and a quarter cup of pumpkin puree. And that worked out very well for me. I really enjoyed it. I also added a little bit of maple syrup in there, a lot, a bit of pumpkin spice, pumpkin pie spice in it. I also added some hemp seeds just to have a little more like nutrients and protein in there. And I also like to eat my oatmeal. I like to make it thick. And then like, as I'm eating it, I add some like a splash of milk here and there to like help cool it down and also make it more creamy and whatnot. I don't know, that's just the way I like to eat my oatmeal. And I also added some crushed up walnuts on top. And then for the last dinner of the video, 
Here I am making my favorite healthy comfort food meal consisting of baked sweet potato, sauteed veggies, boiled legumes, and creamy tahini dressing on top. I love it so much, I've been making it a lot lately. It's my favorite like easy, but also nu nutritious and fibrous dinner to make that gives me some good leftovers. Basically, I just saute whatever veggies I feel like having or trying to get rid of, whatever. Today I did some broccoli and multicolored carrots to attempt to give a fall aesthetic with some purple onion. And then I also put in some spinach at the last few moments to just quickly wilt it up in there. And then I also cook some various legumes on the stove. Usually I like to do some lentils, but since I had already cooked up some lentils earlier in the week, I decided to do a white bean. And then I plop all of that on top of a nice baked sweet potato. If you don't like sweet potatoes, this would also be really good with just a regular potato as well. And then I put my nice little tahini dressing on top of that. And it might seem like somewhat of a random combination of flavors, but I can't explain it. It's just really good to me. Um, I feel like the tahini, like the lemoniness of the tahini dressing cuts through the heartiness and comfortiness of the rest of the stuff. I don't know if that makes any sense, but anyways. So that was the last meal of the video. I hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching. If you like this video and you want to see more videos like this, hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications to see when there's another one, and you can hit a like if you liked it. Comment your favorite things to eat during fall slash Halloween time. Anyways, um, thanks for watching. Hope you have a good Halloween slash everything left to come. Hope you're getting through 2020 adequately and that the rest of your day goes well.